On this episode, we drill in to some of the basic P-Brock movements so that you don't have to be afraid to dive into this amazing musical art form. very much for tuning in. So today we're going to talk about basic P-Brock movements. Uh, I know a lot of bagpipers in and around Dojo University and therefore, you know, the rest of the world, you know, you can assume the rest is true, which is that um, one of the big reasons that people don't get into P-Brock is that they're kind of intimidated and a little bit confused about um uh, P-Brock embellishments and exactly how everything's going to work. As a matter of fact, when you, you know, get a P-Brock score, it's very intimidating because what happens is there's lots of squiggly lines and fermatas and weird, funny-looking embellishments that don't make any sense. And when you look at it, you think to yourself, geez, Louise, this is like impossibly complicated. And I just, I don't have enough interest in P-Brock yet to really want to take uh, this leap, right? Um, P-Brock seems way, way more complicated than it is. And I think, you know, I think if we knew the most basic embellishments when we got started, I think that we would be a lot more likely to want to get into it if we knew those basic things to help break down that barrier. So that's what we're going to do today. Today I have five, what I think are the five most important P-Brock embellishments to understand. And I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to get started with a P-Brock of your choice if you have the following knowledge about the key embellishments. So we're going to do that today and um, <clears throat> we're going to have to go somewhat quickly through this here because we're going to do this in uh, just about 20 minutes. Uh, we're going to go semi-quickly through. Just keep in mind, if you go to youtube.com slash Piper's Dojo, this episode is going to be posted there here you know, by the end of the day. So you'll be able to refer to that um, whenever you need to when it comes to uh, needing to reference these key movements. So here is the first movement. Now, <clears throat> this is actually not too difficult uh, to understand, um, and we see this a lot in bagpipe light music, right? It's called a terlueth. Now, have a look at this music. One of the things, I'm going to see if I can do this backwards, one of the things here that you're going to see in P-Brock notation sometimes is a plain C like this with the letter T next to it. Okay, now that T is an abbreviation for Terlueth. Uh, Robert is asking a question here on the live stream. Are these five movements for ground formulation or for whole tune understanding? The answer is whole tune understanding. Okay, for the most part. Now, there's no way we can learn every P-Brock embellishment, but my objective is we're going to get through these five, and that's going to give you uh, pretty much what you need to know to get started playing any tune. All right? So going back to the Terlowit, the one thing we need to know is this abbreviation, but then the other thing that I want to point out is that this abbreviation translates into something relatively simple, which is a, a Terlowit like this. Notice that we're going to play a G grace note on C, then we're going to play a terlueth down to low A. Also notice the low A after the terlueth is short. Okay, So if we were to play several of these in a row, it's going to go like this. And go ahead, if you have your practice chanter, play along with me right now. It's going to go like this. And you can do that from any note on the scale. <clears throat> okay, and that's what that T represents. And the reason I wanted to start with this <clears throat> is I also want you to see how I want to break down and think about these embellishments. Because we're going to get into embellishments that are a little bit more weird coming up next. Uh, have a look at the three steps. The first step of a terlueth, right, after we've played our C, the first step is going to be play low G. Then we're going to play a D grace note while we're on low G. Then we're going to play an E grace note to low A. 
Okay, and those are the three steps. If you want to write it out without an embellishment, it might look something like this, right? Here's our G grace note to C. Here's our low G. You can see that corresponds to step one here. Then we step two is D grace note to the next low G. Step three, E grace note to the low A. Most of us, if we've played bagpipes for any length of time, are going to be pretty familiar with the terlouet. The next one is really, really important for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is <clears throat> that it's involved in a lot of Pibrock grounds, okay, and I want to go into that now. Oh, getting a lot of G's coming in. Thank you very much for that feedback. Really, really appreciate it. So um, next one is what's called, all right, it's called an Idri, spelled kind of funny, just like that, and it's said just like that, Idri. Okay, now, the abbreviation for Idri that you're going to see a lot of the time is going to be a squiggly line on the E just above the E like that. So if we're coming from C, we might have a squiggly line. That's what the abbreviation is. Here's how it would look like if we wrote it out fully. C, and then the embellishment, Idri, up to E. Here are the steps written out in English, okay? Step one, E grace note to low A. We can all play an E grace note to low A. Then we're gonna play an F grace note on low A. Okay, F grace notes are a little bit weird. We don't usually play them. However, it's not too difficult and we're going to be able to do that. And the final step, super easy, is we're going to play E. And you can see here, if we were to write it out without the embellishment, but just in note form here, okay, here's our C. Then we have E grace note to low A. F grace note on low A, E, okay? So let's try a couple of these together. So we're gonna start on the note C. Then step one is E grace note to low A. Step two is F grace note, just looks like that, right? Just a quick flick of your middle finger there on the left. And then we're gonna play E. So it looks like this. Let's do that again. E grace note to low A, F grace note on low A, up to E. Now, <clears throat> those who are listening to this in podcast form, uh, this is probably going to be most helped to visually. So make sure you go to youtube.com slash Piper's Dojo to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll be able to get this lesson visually, which, you know, um, I think there's definitely a lot you can learn in audio form here, but video is going to be that much more effective. Now, that is <clears throat> how you play an Idri. There's other ways of teaching the Idri, but I find this to be the most intuitive way, and it's the best way to break it down. So again, the Idri, that's all that it is. And you don't have to play it super fast, right? We don't have to play Idris like this. Right? We can get to that fast point later, and it's going to happen very, very naturally if we just carefully play the steps of the Idri every time. Okay, so that's movement number two. Give me a G if you're feeling good with that. Um, <clears throat> let me know if you have any questions, of course. And while we do that, we're going to go to the next Pibrock movement. This is maybe the scariest Pibrock movement, uh, you know, the one that people are most afraid of. But the point that I want to make to you today is that the Crud Lueth here, all right, it looks the scariest, it sounds the scariest, and it has the worst reputation. But I want to point out to you that all a Krenluith is, is a combination of a Terluith and an Idri. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Here's the abbreviation here. It'll be just a plain C, or it could be any note on the scale, but it'll just be a plain note with a C underneath. Okay, that is an abbreviation for this. G grace note to the C. And then this funky looking embellishment here, landing on a relatively short E before we move on to the next one. Okay, now, this looks scary, but have a look at the first four grace notes, for lack of a better term, inside of this embellishment. Do the first four look familiar to you? The first four look exactly like a Tyrloeth because the first few steps of the Krenloeth are exactly the same as the Tyrloeth. Now, 
let me cover up those, and then do the last four of this movement look familiar to you. It looks exactly the same as the Idri we just talked about because it is exactly the same as the Idri we just talked about. So, uh, and again, let's go through the steps. Step one, play low G. Step two, D grace note on low G. Step three, E grace note on low A, or E grace note to low A, rather. Okay, now, this is important because steps one, two, and three are exactly the same as the steps from the Terloeth that we looked at before. <clears throat> now, step three, the E grace note to low A. Step four, F grace note on low A. Step five, play E. Those three steps should look the same as this guy. So, to play the Krun Lueth, that is our mission. So, we're going to start with a G grace note to C. Then we're going to play a Ter Lueth and then that morphs into the Idri. So in super slow-mo, it goes like this. Right? One, two, three, four, five. It's a five-step movement, and those are the exact steps. And that is a Krun Lueth. Now, we could do that from any note. Uh, check out if we just start with a G grace note to E. The Krun Lueth itself is still the same. Or from B. And once you get used to playing those steps, and it'll take some time, it's not going to happen overnight. You probably don't even really want it to happen overnight. But once you get used to that, it's going to start to speed up, and then you're going to start to get that rippling movement that you're used to hearing from the top players, okay? So once you get used to those steps, it'll start to go. Uh, right, so when those steps get put together uh, and they start to become more compressed and quickly played, that's what makes the classic Krenluth. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, so <clears throat> I don't expect anyone to be able to quickly and easily play a Krenluth, but uh, let me know that you, uh, if you can in the live chat, let me know that you now have the knowledge that you need to drill down into this and in a couple practice sessions be able to play one. Because as soon as you can play one, then you can integrate that into any potential PBROC that you want to check out. So those first three, okay, those are the big ones. You know, these guys put together, if you consider how important those variations are, the Terloeth and Krenloeth variations of Pibrock, right? If you consider how important those are, uh, that's uh, going to be a pretty big deal. So drill down into those, and you're going to be really, really well off. So we've done three out of the five already. Okay, now let's get into two of the weird ones that can often be a roadblock. So if, if you stumble across the next one that we're going to talk about in a ground, it can be something that really scares you away and freaks you out and you don't know what to think of it. So the next one I'm talking about is a cadence. Okay, these are known as cadences. All right, and they kind of look freaky. They look like a really complicated, whacked out embellishment. Okay, and it looks like this. However, if you cover up the embellishment, the rest is really easy. It's just a B and then a low G sort of a slur type grace note to low A. But we've seen that before, even in sim simpler tunes like Green Hills and Scott's Wet Hay and so forth. So my point just is if we cover up the cadence, there's nothing here that's all too difficult. Okay. Next, here's the main thing I want you to understand about a cadence. Is this looks like a doubling, but it is not a doubling. Um, the E is a normal melody note inside of the cadence. Okay, This E is just a normal melody note. So all we have is a G grace note to a fairly long E. Then we're going to play a quick D grace note on the way down to our next melody note. All right. So <clears throat> cadence is very simple. It's not even difficult to play. Right? It just goes like this. Uh, 
So let me hold it up again so you can see what I just played. All right, and I'll do that again. Okay, piece of cake. It's really not uh, that difficult to do. My point is, when you see a cadence, there's no need to freak out, okay? You just have to be careful how you interpret it. You don't try to play this as a doubling. It's actually just that E is played as a regular melody note. Now, uh, I'm not gonna go into why cadences exist. That's a little bit more of a complicated, there's a complicated reason behind that, you might say. We're not gonna go into why it exists. I just want you to know what it is. So if you'd like to get into a P rock and try it and you come across one of these, you're not totally freaked out. By the way, um, you don't always, sometimes this last grace note isn't even there, okay? And a cadence would look like that. And that would be the same thing, it's just a cadence. And you'll notice, when you look closely at it, you'll notice that one of those notes is longer. It doesn't have the flags attached that make that note, all right? Give me a G if you're still hearing me loud and clear. That, that brief live stream interruption kind of freaked me out. <clears throat> but that is the fourth P rock movement that you've got to know. Very simple. All right, Elizabeth is G. That's good. All right, the final one we're going to look at is also a little bit scary and tends to be maybe a little bit confusing, and it's called the He Haren. Here is what you might see it abbreviated like. So it'll be a G grace note on E, and then the low A will have the squiggly line above it. Okay. And what that represents is G grace note to E, and then this funky looking thing here. It looks kind of like a G grace noted burl, but it's not. You see it's got the D grace note leading into it. Now, here are the steps of the he herin. Um, <clears throat> so, step one, we're actually going to play a false D for step one. You might be looking at me funny there, but uh, you will see what I mean there. Step two, play low A. Very simple. Step three and four, <clears throat> you see it written out, but really all step three and four is, is we're just going to play a burl. And that is how it's, uh, that's how it's going to be played. Here is a visual representation of what that might look like. And I've put an asterisk above the D to show you that we're actually going to play a false D here. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's go over that <clears throat> playing wise. So the first step is we're going to play a G grace note on E. This is our starting melody note. Okay, the next step of the movement is to play a false D, which looks like this. We're literally just going to pick our pointer finger up in the air like this to make a D. Then the next step is play low A. So we just put that finger down. And the final two steps are to execute a burl. Okay, so in super slow mo, that looks like this. Okay, in super slow mo. Let's do that again. And then we'll do it a little bit faster, although I don't want you to be too interested in full speed right away. Okay, and <clears throat> that is a he her in. Okay, so uh, oftentimes tunes will start, or you know, like a ground of a P rock or the beginning uh, opening variation of a P rock will start with a he her in and end with one. Okay, and you'll see them often popping up here and there. So, my point to you is the he her in is kind of important, and um, these are the exact steps of how you want to play that.